What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today's a chill day, no diving. It's pretty rainy outside. I'll get back to the critter hunting tomorrow. But for today, I just want to have a lazy day and watch this documentary with you guys. It's an old documentary. Hopefully a lot of you have seen it already because it's supposed to be really good. Uh, it was on Netflix. I had it saved and they took it away. Like it's, I can't find it anywhere. Maybe because I'm in the Philippines. I don't know. Uh, but I had to find it elsewhere. So we're going to watch it together and I'm going to react. Um, I think it'll be fun, but I think the biggest challenge is going to be, uh, not getting a copyright strike. So obviously I can't show the whole thing on here. Uh, but hopefully I don't get a copyright. So let's just get going. I'm so glad I don't have to buy dry suits where uh, where I dive. So expensive. Did I say wet suit or dry suit? Dry suit. So that guy that was just talking, uh, I think he's, he's, I think maybe the main guy in this video. I actually looked him up uh, before I watched this, and he is a tech diving master. Uh, uh, that's all I can really call him. Uh, they're, I think all these guys are Finnish, even though, if you don't know what this is about, it's a cave diving story in Norway, but the guys are Finnish. Uh, but yeah, this dude, I can't, I can't remember his name, but he's insane. He's done some insane diving. Hostile to human beings, yeah. Yeah, they're definitely talking Finnish. So, how, I'm going to pause right there. How many of you guys have got to dive with scooters? Uh, I never have. Maybe I should. Uh, that could be some cool, cool footage. But let me know in the comments below if you've ever dove with the scooters like this. I did do a cave diving uh, video, like talking about the top caves you can dive if you're qualified. Uh, so if you want, you can watch the watch that after this video. Uh, but I did mention this cave just because of this documentary. And actually, a dive center reached out to me that offers dives here. But anyway, so you guys, I got a question for you. What is more dangerous and takes more training to do? This extreme cave diving or being an astronaut? Because I know <laughs> I'm working on just learning tech diving. Just the intro to tech diving. It wasn't too hard, but damn that's just the intro 
Uh, and these guys are <sighs> thousands and thousands of dives and dollars ahead of that. Uh, so I know how much training they have to do just for deep or uh, caves uh, and how much money it costs. Seems to me like being an astronaut, all they really do is sit there and somebody pushes a button. They're relying on NASA's technology. Somebody else's, uh, you know, there's not much they can do. But uh, let me know in the comments below what you think. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, I want to see the dive profile. This is probably an extreme dive already, uh, but now it's in ice. Makes sense because it's in Norway, but damn, it's already hard enough without the ice, boys. Go to Caribbean. Silloin olen sukellusmatkalla mukana, niin kaikkien henkilöiden kanssa sukeltanut vaativampiakin sukelluksia. Yeah, these guys stick together. It's hard to find people you trust for this extreme shit. Totta kai nyt jälkikäteen ajateltuna mahdollisesti jotain olisi voinut tehdä toisin, mutta, mutta siinä tilanteessa se on todella nopea ajanjaksuus. Onnettomuus tapahtuu, niin sillä hetkellä tein kaiken mitä osasin jo pystyyn, mutta olosuhteet ei ollut ihan helppo. Sukelluksen alkuun se oli mennyt ykköstiimillä ihan ok ja sitten kun he oli syvimmän osuuden ohittanut ja päätyi noin 110 metrissä vanahtavan kohdalle, josta I gotta pause it there. Can you guys read that? They reached a narrow tunnel at a depth of 110 meters. <laughs> guys, I'm not even qualified to watch this video. Neither are you. Nobody is. So, let me get this straight. And you tech divers, please, uh, and cave divers, let me comment below. But, not only are they in Norwegian freezing ice water, I thought I thought this was just cave diving, but they're a hundred. They go down a hundred and ten meters <laughs> before they hit the cave. I mean, imagine how narked you are, and how much things could go wrong just getting down to the cave, and then you're in the cave where you have to be super on point. Nothing happening. Super. I mean, ice cold water in your veins, uh, so you don't. So many things to go wrong. Uh, I have over 2,200 dives. I'm a dive master. Uh, I've dove all over the world, all different kinds of uh, conditions. I've taken intro to CCR, tech diving, all this. Anyways, I'm only I'm only qualified for 40 meters. <laughs> 110 meters 110 meters up and down is one thing but a cave let's just watch that is Mahtimme insane Matti meni läpi ja Jari sit tuli perässä hän juttu varusteistaan kiinni tähän ahtaumaan ja oh no siitä sit so he's stuck at 110 meters deep ongelmia vyöryä että hän ei sit selvinny vaikka uh... Matti voitti kovasti auttaa Syvin kohta oli ohitettu jo ja sit lähti nousemaan se, se luola sitten, että siitä mä menin läpi ja mä näin, että Jari sit vilkutti valoa siinä mulle, et... näytti huomiomerkin mulle, että tänne ja mä näin, että hän oli lainissa kiinni vähän ja mä huomasin, että rupes vähän kierrokset nousee, mitä nyt on ihan selvää, jos sä oot tossa syvyydessä kiinni. Dude. Mä huusin sillä aina välillä, että rauhoitu, rauhoitu, nyt ja sit sä voit ottaa pullo ja sit mä otin sen ja sit mä kuskasin niitä edes takaisin. 
You know how much you would panic if you were stuck in a skinny cave like that, 110 meters underwater? Oh my god. What could it I don't even know what to say about that. I'm just trying to imagine these conditions. These guys are stone cold badasses. So basically Man, can you imagine these conditions? You go 110 meters deep with six tanks each, I don't know, plus a scooter, uh, or maybe four tanks and a rebreather, uh, then you're in these tiny caves. If somebody gets stuck, it's not like you could go around them to, to, you'd have to go back the way you came, which might screw your whole profile. Maybe it's shorter to go forward, but you can't, and then you... You see your friend panicking because he's dying. He's, you're trying to help him take the tanks through so he's unstuck. Then his regulator falls out and he's drinking air and you're trying to push it in. Uh, while you're also at 100 and whatever meters trying to conserve your air and you're narked and trying not to panic. Like you said, a cascade of problems with one little thing going wrong. Just trying to, like, they're not really talking about how crazy this is. They're just, they're stone cold Finnish. You know, I know Finnish people. They're, they're just matter of fact. <laughs> yeah, he starts really too fast. Oh my god, so the other team's behind him, now they can't get through and he knows they're going to be trapped too. This guy's uh, traumatized. Or Everybody else is trapped now. What? So the first guy dies. He, tra he clogs the whole cave. Now the second team comes up and the... The second guy dies. dies. Is there more than two? So basically, this guy, I don't know his name, sorry, but he, he sees his friends die, he knows he's trapped, he thinks 
his friend Vesa is probably trapped and gonna die. He has no way to help them and himself. This is a bad situation. Uh, like, no wonder he's freaking traumatized, man. It would traumatize me just going through this cave at 110 meters and surviving with nothing bad going on. This guy is trapped. All his friends are dying. He has to somehow turn around and go back the way he came. Can you imagine that safety stop? I don't know how many hours and hours you're going to be going back to the surface. But the whole time you're going to be like, all my friends are dead. Yeah, he thinks they're all dead. A hundred and thirty meters. So the cave entrance is one tail, and then it keeps going. He's dead at 130 meters. Oh, so he doesn't even have the option. He's going the other. He doesn't even have the option to turn around. Ten hours to get. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> so his friends did turn around, and it was ten hours to get back to the surface. I was thinking like six, because I don't know. But oh my god! So can you imagine turning around and for ten hours you're floating there doing deco stops, whatever, just thinking for ten hours, nothing else to do but think about how all your friends are dead. Me neither, bro. <laughs> that guy's traumatized, and it takes a lot to traumatize a Finn. Kaksi suomalaismiestä on kuollut sukellusonnettomuudessa Pohjois-Norjassa. Turmassa myös loukkaantui kolme heidän toveriaan. Onnettomuus sattui vedenalaisessa luolastossa muui ranaan kaupungin lähellä. Tästä pienestä vuoristolammesta suomalaismiehet lähtivät traagisesti päättyneelle sukellukselle. So I I have to edit some of this out. I can't just show you the whole uh, documentary because copyright and plus spoiler alert. Uh, but Basically, you saw their friends die in this crazy cave, and they went home. It was in the Norwegian news. People freaked out. They closed down the dive site. Uh, it's illegal to go there. They sent in British and American like special tech cave rescue teams, and these special teams went down, and they could not recover the bodies. Uh, Basically, the bodies are stuck down there at 130 meters underwater in a cave, tiny cave. They're just stuck. These, the world's best cave divers couldn't recover them. So now we're back in Finland and the original team are planning and scheming how to sneak back into the dive site. Uh, they're going to do it in the winter when nobody's... Probably nobody's paying attention. Snowmobile up to this freaking hole in the ice and recover their friends on their own. They think it's their duty. First of all, they know better than anybody how crazy this dive is. Second of all, is it their duty? I mean, their families are cool. They seem like they would understand if 
they didn't risk their lives to go save the bodies. Uh, but what would you do if you were qualified? Even if you're qualified, it's obviously dangerous. The guys that died had a ton of experience uh, as well. But what would you do? I mean, you feel so sorry for these guys. Um, just comment in the section below because I don't think it's their duty. Uh... To risk their lives, and you, you, I think they also said one of the guys is he got the bins real bad and it kind of broke his back, so he can't even dive. He's gonna be like the coordinator for the dive, and the other guy that I said was traumatized, he's doing it, but he don't look too. He looks a little nervous, so. All I can say is finish our stone cold badasses. <sighs> so basically, that's what this documentary is about. It's not about the friends dying, it's about the other friends recovering them, because that's an insane thing. Let's go. I mean, it's not just wrapping up bodies, untangling them, they got how many tanks, rebreathers, scooters. Yeah, now they're back in Norway, they snowmobile to this crazy location, farm, closest to the uh, dive site. Reina, whatever it's called, Plura, Plura Caves, Moirana. Can we drive just with your scooter? Yeah, we should that. So that guy must be Norwegian, doesn't speak Finnish, but they all speak English. Just that cold water would. Just to dive in cold water, you need a ton of experience. Let alone the depth and all the other stuff they're doing. So much to consider. You cave divers are insane and awesome. Huge respect. Sure, he's just setting them up for deco stops, but that looks insane. Oh, so here's the dive profile of the cave or the depth. Let's see. Wow. So that deepest part was 130 meters where the one guy was dead and the other one is let me pause that so it looked like they're doing two entries because the cave connects and I think one team will go in one way and try to get one guy in his gear and the other team will go the other way uh, I think that's how they're doing it <laughs> It just as complicated as the first dive was now they have a whole element of recovery and let's just go 55 meters so this must be the other entry where it's yeah okay this is the this isn't the plura entry it's this whatever where the cave already starts narrow at 55 meters. Look at this guy, he's already at 78 meters. Crawling through 
through narrow openings with all that gear. They sound hilarious because they're on nitrox, who knows what gases, who knows how much money they spent on this dog. down the wrong tunnel at 85 meters has to turn around his friends like where are you oh my god probably was about him. Oh. oh, this Kai, he went, he went back to the surface and his two dive buddies, uh, they went on without him. Luckily, there was three of them, but Kai, just look at him, man. He's not worried about himself. He's worried about losing his friends, and there's nothing he can do and feeling helpless, I guess. I mean, I'm not an ex expert, but these stone-cold badasses are not cowards, man. They're not worried about their own skills. They're not worried about themselves. They're just... It seems to me he's more, uh, he doesn't want to be a burden on his friends. He doesn't want to, I don't know, I can't, man, this poor dude, man, he's, uh, post-traumatic stress. Uh, he's just, he said he's not sleeping and everything. He's just, he's got guilt and he doesn't want his other friends to get hurt. I'm exhausted watching this. I would love to meet this guy, especially this guy. No, I, I'd love to meet the whole team. I, I'm, I'm going to stop it there. This is just a crazy video. I love it. Or documentary, I mean. Uh, so if you guys ever want to check out this cave, I mean, you don't have to do what they did. There's a lot of, they said there's a lot of entry level stuff. Then go to Instagram and check out Black Duck Diving. Uh, their Instagram feed is insane, uh, but anyways, kudos to these guys. They're my heroes now. I love this documentary. If I had one complaint about this documentary, is they're so low-key, they're not talking about how difficult this is. They're showing numbers, and you have to know, holy shit, 120 meters. I get narked and drunk when I'm at freaking 40 meters for eight minutes. Can you imagine a 10 hour deco time underwater? I mean, uh, I, I, you guys get it. Comment below if you think this is the most insane cave dive you've ever heard of. And if it's not, 
definitely comment below. I want to see it. I want to watch it. I'll react. If you guys want me to make another reaction video, I will. So, definitely go watch this if you have it. It's called Diving Into The Unknown. And if you guys want me to do another reaction video, let me know what. I got more coming from Blue Planet 1 and 2, as well as some other cave diving ones that I found from Jill Hindworth. So, thank you guys for watching. <laughs> Please comment below. Let's get this conversation going because this is right now the most insane scuba diving documentary I've ever seen. It just blows my mind. Plus, it's emotional and all that. I mean, alright. See you guys on the next one.